Welcome to part 12 of the Autodesk Inventor 101 The Basics series. In this episode, I'll take a look at editing parts inside of an assembly as well as using constraints to drive motion. To begin, the length of the connecting rod needs to be increased. By double clicking on the part, it will activate directly in the assembly. The sketch can now be edited under the extrusion in the model tree. With the sketch active, change the length from 2.25 inches to 4.75 inches, finish the sketch, and return to the assembly with the part updated. The crankshaft is also going to need edited. Instead of modifying the sketch like in the connecting rod, you can choose to modify an extrusion. In this case, the cylindrical extrusion that is connecting to the piston case. Changing the value from 0.25 to 2 inches, the geometry is now finished and we can return back to the assembly. To better help see the parts in the assembly while they're moving, let's define some new materials that are transparent. With the piston case selected, at the top of the ribbon change from the default material to a polycarbonate. Repeat this process for the piston head, this time choosing a brushed stainless steel. And then another transparent material similar to the polycarbonate for the connecting rod. If you click and drag on the crankshaft, you can see how the various parts will move. To automate this movement, define a new constraint. Instead of using flush or mate like in part 11, choose direct angle and select the top surface of the crankshaft and the top surface of the piston case, and then press OK. From the model tree, select the newly defined constraint, right click and choose drive. Define a starting angle of zero and an end value of 36,000. This will allow for multiple cycles when animating. By looking at more options, you'll see that you have more settings to work with to change the way that your animation looks. You can choose to export an animation of this motion by pressing the red button below the play button. That's all there is when it comes to editing parts in an assembly, as well as driving motion using constraints. Join me for the next Autodesk Inventor 101 The Basics video, where I'll take a look at working with the presentations panel in Inventor. Thank you.